that's integrate e to the 2 zeta times sine of 3 zeta. And then this integral requires integration by parts. I will show you guys with the DM method. And this is the third step that we have to know when you are using the DM method. So let's get to work. Let me put down a D and an I. And then we are going to choose something to be differentiated and then something else to be integrated. We have e to the 2 zeta and we have sine of 3 zeta. Just think about it. In fact, they are both equally easy to be differentiated or to integrate, right? I can totally integrate sine, I can totally integrate e to the something. So, in fact, in this case, it doesn't matter which one we choose to be differentiated nor to be integrated, doesn't matter. Let me just differentiate e to the 2 zeta and then let me integrate sine of 3 zeta. If you want to switch these two choices, it's fine as well. The answer will be the same at the end. And don't forget, let's just get down the plus minus sign. I don't know how many I need. Let's just put down a few of them and then let's see. So let me get to work. We are going to differentiate e to the 2 zeta. The first time, we are going to have 2e to the 2 zeta. The second time, we are going to get 4e to the 2 zeta. And if you want to do it again, 8e to the 2 zeta. And then we don't know when to start because you know, it's just always going to be e to the 2 zeta times something else. But let me just do a few of them and see what's up, all right? And now let's look at integrating sine of 3 zeta. If you do it once, you are going to get negative 1 third cosine of 3 zeta. Anti-derivative sine is negative cosine. And then don't forget, because the inside is 3 zeta, so we have to divide it by 3. In another word, multiply by 1 over 3. And then we have to do it again. So I will get the antiderivative of cosine is positive sine. So this sign will stay the same. Negative 1 over 9, because I divide it by 3 again. And I'll get sine, and we have 3 zeta. At this stage, we are going to stop. And the reason is because, look at, this part is e to the 2 zeta, and then this part is sine of 3 zeta. We have to remember the product of each row represents an integral. If you see the function part, you see e to the 2 zeta times sine of 3 zeta. It's exactly the same as what we start off with. If you see the function part repeat, we stop. This is the third stop in the DI method. So in fact, I didn't need this row at all. We are good to go. And the product of the diagonal is going to give us the answer. And let's see what we get. So this is going to be e to the 2 zeta. And we have to account for the sign, by the way. Positive e to the 2 zeta times negative 1 over 3 cosine of 3 zeta. So I'll just put down negative 1 over 3 times e to the 2 zeta times cosine of 3 zeta. So that's the first part. And then I just do the product of the another diagonal. I have the negative 2 times negative 1 over 9. That's going to be plus 2 over 9. And let me write down e to the 2 zeta right here. And then we have sine of 3 zeta. And then lastly, the product of the last row is an integral. So we have to talk about the product of positive 4 times negative 1 over 9, which is a minus 4 over 9. And then let me just put the function part inside of the integral. We have the minus 4 over 9 in front of the integral e to the 2 zeta times sine of 3 zeta. And we have this is the integral, so I put down d zeta at the end. As you can see, this is kind of like deja vu, because this integral is exactly where we start with. And then let me just kind of erase this part, because this is the next step that we have to do. So as you can see, this right here is just the repeat of the original. And this is what we do. We are going to add 4 over 9 of the same integral, which is e to the 2 zeta times sine of 3 zeta, cos, uh, I mean d zeta right here, so that they will cancel each other out. And I'll do it right here as well. Let me put on plus 4 over 9 integral e to the 2 zeta sine of 3 zeta d zeta. So we can kind of like combine like terms, things like that. So this part is gone. Right here, we have what? This is that 1 times this integral, but then I have plus 4 over 9, 
of the other integral. So that was a plus right here. Okay. So we just have to work out the fractions. 1 plus 4 over 9 is going to be 13 over 9. So here we have 13 over 9 times this integral, which is the integral e to the 2 zeta times sine of 3 zeta d zeta. And this will be the same as this right here. And remember, these are the answer part. I will just write this down. Negative 1 third e to the 2 zeta. And then we have the cosine of 3 zeta. Close that. Plus 2 over 9 times e to the 2 zeta times sine of 3 zeta. Are we done? No, because we don't like to have the 13 over 9 in front. So what can we do? We just need to multiply 9 over 13 so that they cancel each other out. And then I just have to multiply 9 over 13 throughout the right hand side. Finally, we know that the integral, which is the one that we wanted to do at the, you know, uh, in the beginning, right? The integral of e to the 2 zeta times sine of 3 zeta d zeta. This right here, I just need to distribute the 9 over 13 into the parentheses and I'll be done. Right here, I can of course reduce. 3 goes into 9 3 times, so we have 3 over 13. And that was a negative, so let's put a negative 3 over 13. After I multiply this total of fractions, and then have the function part e to the 2 zeta cosine of 3 zeta. And now take this times that, the 9 will cancel. I will have the plus 2 over 13. And this part, e to the 2 zeta cos I mean sine of 3 zeta. And then we are done. So what do we do next? We put a plus C, and then this is it.